Is that your mating call, sir? I see why it's not working. Okay. Hey there, thanks for tuning in. This is another gig log on the Torgo Entertainment YouTube channel. I'm Torgo, thanks for joining me. We have come to the end of April. It is still prom season. Tonight's prom takes us back to Hammondsport. Hammondsport is a school I have done many different events for, for the past four or five years, actually. Hammondsport, like a lot of the towns around the Finger Lakes region, right on Cuco Lake on the southern tip, as it turns out. And they have had me do several of their school dances since 2015. Hammondsport has a policy where they let the students decide who they want to DJ the events, which is really kind of neat, which helps with me having had such a prolonged presence there. However, earlier this year when it came to the winter ball, they had a bit of a change in the student council and one of the higher-ups knew another DJ and they decided to go with him. These things happen, you can't take it personally. But as it turns out, at my day job, one of my coworkers was going on some diatribe about how she was looking for a DJ for her daughter's junior prom this year. And obviously people know I'm a DJ, so everyone was kind of turning to me like, eh, eh, you, huh, yeah. And I was like, yeah, sure, what's the school? And she said, Hammondsport. <laughs> so I'm doing it. I ended up working out the contract with them and we are doing the Hammondsport Junior Prom. I always like to test new equipment at proms in particular. Reason being with weddings, you don't really want to experiment with new stuff at weddings. It's a little more tightly controlled with what you do and don't bring. Whereas with proms, it's usually not a big deal if you go a little bit bigger. The kids are never going to complain that they get more bang for their buck. And plus, you know, I was in high school once. I've seen some terrible high school dances in my day. So I'm not afraid to go a little bit bigger and try out some new stuff in that kind of a setting. We will have the Chave one and a half meter tall glow totems. I know that the standard is the two meter tall, but they won't fit in my car. I did the measurements and they just will not fit. So I had to go with the one and a half meter. I'll have my moving heads sitting on top of them. I think it should be high enough where we won't have to worry about people getting blinded. I don't foresee it being an issue. And plus when I had my truss at other events, the moving heads hung down far enough where it's roughly the same height. So I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. The other equipment I'm going to be trying out, which is kind of a misnomer because how do you really try it out? It works or it doesn't, is a dragon front board facade. And again, I want to stress that no companies sponsor me. I just liked the look of this facade. I wanted to get a new one. My other facade was a tabletop facade and I do enjoy it. It's perfectly serviceable, but it does kind of look like 3D glasses sitting on a table. Although I do really like the effect I had with a white table cloth over the tabletop and you put one hex bar underneath and one behind the facade. It's a really neat double layer effect, but I'm just trying new things out and I saw the Ritmo facade design. That's how they pronounced it when I talked to Dragon on the phone, so that's the one I'm going with. It was the only one I really liked in white and I really wanted to have a white facade without the black trim of my tabletop facade. So we're going with that and we're gonna see how it works. That just came in last night. I didn't realize how heavy it was gonna be. It's like 70 pounds because I had to get the fiberglass version because I don't feel like having lycra tear accidentally. Now you may think being a lakeside town that the prom would be in Hammondsport, but that is not the case. They actually had a lot of trouble finding a venue for the prom. A lot of these lakeside establishments, there are 11 different Finger Lakes, and believe me, there are tons of wineries and wedding venues and country clubs and whatnot. So they book up pretty quick. So we have to have this at the Lakeside Country Club in Penn Yan. I took it upon myself because I had never been to the venue before to check it out a couple weeks ago. Here's what I found. Now, last time you saw me for a gig log, that was the Jasper Troopsburg prom, and they never really had a theme, so I could kind of get away with whatever design I wanted to do. I decided on the pinkish purple tones because everybody looks good 
in pink and purple lighting at DJ events. This time around though, they do have a theme and the theme is Enchanted Forest, which of course means green. And that worries me a little bit because nobody looks good in green lighting. It's just a fact of life. As it turns out, there is a theme park in New York State called Enchanted Forest. And I had been there when I was a kid. I wasn't about to drive all the way to Old Forge to get some footage because that is a four, four and a half hour drive from Corning. I don't feel like doing that, especially for a video, no offense. But I have been there before, so I managed to get some footage from my dad who videotaped our 1992 visit to Enchanted Forest. I took a look at it to see some inspiration, what kind of coloring they used. I noticed the hunter green, which I kind of expected to be everywhere, but I noticed a lot of pink as well, which I don't remember having, as well as a lot of light blue because it is a water park. This whole color palette is something you don't really see anymore. Everything is so bold and pops on the screen with your 1080p and your 4K. The washed out color scene isn't really something you see anymore, but it gave me a good idea with what I wanted to do. So we have to see where we're going. Let's go to the map. We have about an hour drive ahead of us, which normally wouldn't be that big of a deal. Unfortunately, being the end of April in upstate New York, we have an unusual circumstance going on. You may notice I'm wearing a much heavier jacket than I normally do, which isn't for the look. It's because it's snowing outside. Man, I sure do hate the snow. Nothing heavy, just a light flurry of snow. It shouldn't affect the roads too much, but people drive very differently when it starts to snow, especially when you get into the warmer months. I hope you're strapped in. I'm excited to figure out how I'm going to incorporate the Enchanted Forest theme to use the new equipment and to make sure these kids have a good time. By the way, let me know in the comments, what do you think of this backdrop? I really didn't like the blank wall I had before, so I decided to buy a painting. Let me know if you think it works. It matches the pillows at least. But I'm ready, I hope you're ready. Let's go. And here we have the setup for the prom. Here's the primary setup, but with the bar in the middle, we have to have our lighting completely separate. They are connected. It was a little annoying to deal with. We have the dragon board facade, the Ritmo pattern, the glow totems, the height ended up being fine. And we'll get a little bit closer. These are the ADJ light up speaker stands. I have them without a scrim on there just because the scrim made it look way too white and look like a wall. I have a bunch of stuff fastened. We have the receiver for the My DMX Go. We have the ADJ power bars. I love these things. I just got them. Having the power up and out of the floor area makes life easier. Yes, I'm still managing cables. The Pocket Pros, which are workhorses. I don't need anything larger because the hall is so shallow. Coming back behind the booth, you can see in the distance the light tree will get there. We have my Samsung laptop with virtual DJ I know come at me. The Pioneer mixing board that is, oh, you know what that is. And you can see we have the ADJ Hex Bar 9s, two of them lighting up the facade underneath. The 12s are a little too long, the 6s are a little too short, and I don't own 6s. Looking at the distance, let me hit the zoom feature to show you these trees, just some standard light trees. We have a stinger dangling from the bottom. We have the Royal Galaxian and the Galaxian 2 lasers, and we have eight of the Mega Hex Pars up top. Like I said, I'm still working on getting the cabling done. I just needed to have the time to film this. And that pretty much covers everything. We have my tablet to control the DMX lighting. Everything is wired up, ready to go. And let's take a look at the up lighting briefly. Over to the left of me, they have a seating area. I have two of my element hexes providing up lighting on these trees. And along the back wall, I have six more element hexes lighting up the sunflowers, the pillars in between the windows, and various other architectural features. So that's the setup. All we need to do now is suit up. So let's level up. <laughs> Go! 
Let's go. And we're back the morning after. Do I really need to tell you that this went well? This went very, very well. It's really nice when kids remember me from years past and they're like, hey, it's good to see you again. And you did a great job and you played songs that I actually recognized. All my concerns with the equipment ended up being moot points. The totems were absolutely tall enough, no one complained about the moving heads having light shine in their faces. The green, we had enough of the offset from the hex pars coming in where nobody really looked green. Obviously, it does appear that way in some of the footage, but that's kind of inevitable given the backwash of the uplighting. But overall, everybody had a really great time. I'm gonna leave a playlist at the end of the video, just like I tend to do with all of these, which I do not to really brag, but you can't really just copy a playlist and play it somewhere else because it's so dependent on the crowd and the atmosphere. But I hope you enjoyed this. I'm keeping the outro short. I'm Torgo of Torgo Entertainment. And until the next gig, we'll see you then. Take care. <laughs>